So I would like for you to raise your hands and let it come this way and say, District Elder Jones, we are glad you're here. We are praying for you. Now preach the word. I give God some glory to God. Surely we honor the Lord tonight and we're particularly grateful to God because we realize that it's only because of his goodness and only because he's been so kind to us that we are able to gather in this very wonderful place and to be here clothed and in our right minds. We honor God because we realize that he is a good God and he's kind to all of us and sometimes it seems as if all his business is to take care of us and to make sure that we do his will. We honor God because we realize that we're living in the last hours and if there's any time that we need the energy of God, surely the time is now. We need his power, we need his strength, we need him to help us in all of the endeavors that we put our hands to and we just want to make sure that whatever we do, it's part of his program. If it's part of the Lord's program, then he will bless it. He may or may not come and be a part of our program, but he will be a part of his own. And so we, we just want God to continue to bless and to smile upon us. So we honor the Lord first of all. It's not because we got on the right plane or because the pilot was so skillful while we got here, God gave us traveling mercies. And for those of you that traveled even across the street, God has been good to you because you didn't have to get here. So the Lord should not have much problem finding any praise in this church tonight. And then after 58 years of Bible conference and great speakers and having been pastored by two great pastors, amen, uh, I'm sure that you're ready to go higher in God. We honor God's man in this part of the vineyard to the Honorable Bishop Alfonso Scott and certainly to his wife and family and very definitely to the memory of the late Bishop P.L. Scott to all of the great pastors and preachers that are gathered in this place tonight and to all of the choirs and saints, administrators, surely we say praise the Lord to everybody. Lord. Now, good leadership is hard to find. Right. And when you have a great pastor, you are blessed of God. Amen. Amen. One of the great curses of, of, of life <laughs> is to be born in the time of bad leadership. Amen. Have you ever considered that? Just by chance of birth. Can you imagine being born in Israel under Manasseh? Just by chance of birth, you just happened to come in the world at a time when the leadership was so bad that it caused you great problems. Think about Ahab. And think about the Bible declaring that the leaders caused the people to err. Amen. What did they have to do with the people they were born under? So when you're born under great leadership and you come into a church with great leadership, it's something to thank God for. Amen. 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 So why don't we put our hands together and give God a praise for our pastor. How about a little more treble sound man? Put a little more treble. Can you hear me sound man? A little more treble. Look at the person behind you and say, don't talk about my pastor. Behind my back. Come on, give God a praise for the man. Amen. Uh, sound man, sound man, if you can hear me, put a little more treble in the mic, please. Amen. Amen. We, I would that you would turn with me tonight to the book of Romans chapter 8. And consider with me the closing portions of that great chapter. It's just very special to see District Elder Lloyd and the manner in which he came to be in this great service. Amen. Just, that's sort of wonderful and very brotherly, I think. 
Amen, amen. Notice verse 31 as Paul begins to conclude the conclusion of his presentation of Jesus Christ which he actually started in the very first chapter of this great book. And before you go and have a conclusion to anything, you, you have to be, you have to have a test of some kind. And so here is the test. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Can you say who? who? Shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Somebody shout who? who? Is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Can you say who, who? shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, can you say amen? amen? Thank you, sound man. I want you to notice 36 and 37, but particularly focus on 37. If you just by surface, just looking at it from the surface, you'd have to recognize that somehow 36 doesn't seem to quite fit in this passage of great power. For he's writing about the power of God. He's asking us questions in relationship to that power. And then he interjects, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. Mm -hmm. And then he counters 36 with nay or no. In all these things we are more than conquerors. I'd like to talk a little bit tonight about more than conquerors. I'm not just a conqueror, but I'm more than. Father, help us right now. We claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. I had difficulty with the more than. It was difficult because I was trying to figure out at what point does a conqueror become a more than conqueror. Particularly when you understand from the Greek that a conqueror is a hooper nekeo, simply meaning a person who vanquishes beyond or a person who gains a decisive 
victory. So now, at what point does a person who gains a decisive victory become a person who gains more than a decisive victory? Well, maybe I'm the only one with the problem. To conquer, I have to exceed above and beyond to conquer. Now, at what point does one who has exceeded beyond and above goes further beyond and further above? to be classified not only as a winner but a more than winner. You know, we live in a time when most people think, or a lot of people think, that the church doesn't really deal with reality. Amen. And I don't think that God is being facetious. I don't think he's playing with us. When he decides to describe us, not merely as conquerors, but more than. Now, I'm going to take you to conquerors. I think I can get there. And then we'll see, can we find out about this more than. When you deal with the book of Romans, it's declared as Paul's treatise of the gospel. And a wonderful thing that God has done, uh, help me sound man, because I'm, I'm, I'm falling apart. A wonderful thing that God has done is he has given us not only the historical account of Jesus Christ, but he has also given us the theological philosophy of what went on behind the scenes of the historical gospel presentation. If I simply were to sit here as a recipient of Jesus Christ primarily because of the story of the gospel, thank you Bishop, then I would uh, test, 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 test. All right. Uh -huh. Then I would only believe on Jesus, but I wouldn't know very much of what happened behind the scenes. If you think with me, the presentation of Jesus from an historical context deals with the uniqueness of his birth, the uniqueness of his life, the uniqueness of his death, and the uniqueness of his resurrection. And believing Jesus in the presentation of the gospel, I would come into the church. But I wouldn't know anything about justification, reconciliation, propitiation, or redemption in the more intricate presentation of what the blood does and what the whole operation of Calvary means to me as a child of God. Nobody comes in here by what they know. We come into the church by what we believe. But God has so fixed it that after we come in, we learn about that same Jesus Christ so that we're not sitting here merely believing, but we are now coming to a state of knowledge. It's important because we live in a time when 
emotionalism, emotionalism is the major. But you can't always go by how you feel. You have got to know that no matter how I feel today, victory shall be mine. We've got to recognize then that Paul continually deals with us from the standpoint of I would not have you to be ignorant brethren because he recognizes that the situation in the life of the child of God will not always give the impression that God is operating in the life of the same. Now, I don't want to deal tonight, maybe tomorrow, deal with the fact that God is never to be recognized. God is always revealed. That's a whole nother thing. But it's important to see that Paul continually indicates that understanding and logic are a critical part of the Christian journey. That's why he opens this great chapter with the word therefore. And he uses the whole chapter 8 to prove that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And he has to declare that behind a therefore. Because there are times, no matter how you are walking with God, there are times when you just don't feel like you are making it like you should. Uh, we might as well tell it. And so now, whenever you see a therefore, it brings to a conclusion certain truths and facts that are imperative to faith and to insight. How can I be expected to walk in the light, in the brightest light the world has ever seen, and walk in that light ignorantly and emotionally without an assurance in my soul that the God I serve will bring me out of every and any situation that I find myself in. Sometimes we expect the saints to express joy. But how can a child of God genuinely express joy about anything they don't understand? How can I, Lord help me, run up and down the aisles of the church throw up my hand shout until my wig falls off shout until I shout out my shoes about anything that I don't understand I think if I knew what was going on or I knew what the outcome would be or I knew what God was doing then when I lifted my hands to praise him I wouldn't only be praising him because of the way I feel but I would be praising him about what I know Lord help me here tonight ah, if I were if I were to get off the plane, if I were to walk into my driveway and my wife ran out of the house with keys to a silver spur Rolls Royce, white on white. And she says to me, no, here is the car. Isn't it lovely? There's no way for me to show any kind of joy until I understood how it was with her limited resources that she could present in my driveway a $165,000 vehicle. There's absolutely no way for me to dance around the car until I understood how she got it. 
and a lot of times we're expected to jump for joy to leap in the house of God and we get upset when folks won't shout but I need to understand what I'm shouting about when my bills are due when my heart is broken when I'm going through things that I don't know how I got into if you want me to lift up the name of Jesus then you got to tell me something about what he'll do when I'm in the trouble I'm in can you say amen and so therefore therefore then becomes an anchor which follows whatever truth that has been presented in such a manner that the only way to disprove the conclusion is to disprove that the truths presented were not solid Ah, if certain things are the way they are, then certain things hold true. Because of one thing, another thing happens. Because of sin's power, I need a savior. Therefore, Christ died. Because Christ died, I have redemption. Therefore, I am delivered. Ah, be there because he lives. Therefore, I can face tomorrow. Now, if you're going to tell me that I can't face tomorrow, then you're going to have to tell me he doesn't live. If you can't prove that he doesn't live, then you can't prove I can't face tomorrow. Ah, if I'm delivered and I know and believe I'm delivered the only way for you to prove I'm not delivered is to prove he didn't die he didn't rise again and didn't shed his blood for my sins if you can't prove he didn't die if you can't prove he didn't raise then you can't make me believe that I can't make it no matter how rough the storm is because of certain theories in geometry that have been tested conclusions are drawn and geometric problems solved because of certain fixed and unmovable laws about gravity about wind velocity about jet propulsion a pilot sits in a 300,000 pound DC-10 at 161 miles an hour the wind catches the wings and pulls that thing to 45,000 feet now I don't care how he feels at a certain speed that thing is going up I don't care how bad he feels when he pushes the throttle and it rises off the ground it's not rising on how he feels it's rising on some facts that have been put together by science the doctor gives insulin for sugar and he's not worried whether it'll work I don't care how he feels he knows that it'll do something to the sugar now if the mathematician can trust his figures if the aviator can drink coffee at 45,000 feet if scientists are satisfied then why should I sit in this church and give the impression because I got a bad situation that God is not greater than my situation God will bring me out all right no matter how rough it is because he is God and I'm a conqueror I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight I feel the Spirit of God so then we've got to understand as one writer said I sometimes think that the whole secret of the Christian life is to know how to use the word therefore the Christian life is in many ways a matter of logic a matter of deduction unquote and so now we can look within this text we find in chapter 8 that Paul has laid down some premises and the first premise he's laid down is the regulative principle of the Holy Spirit and what he's saying to us here is the law of the spirit of life in Christ hath made me free from the law of sin and death as long as the Holy Ghost is in me working I can't like I used to I wish I could preach this thing here tonight I'm a little tired I'm gonna be better off tomorrow if God help me ah you can't 
act like you used to feel with the Holy Ghost. You can't walk on people and treat them with impecunity and lay down to sleep as if nothing happened. The Holy Ghost I have will shake you in the middle of the night, will wake you about two or three and cause you to pick up a phone. And it won't say if I did you wrong, but it'll say sorry. Uh, you just can't end up in bed in the wrong bed with the Holy Ghost without a fight. Uh huh. You got to press over the word. You got to fight over prayer. You got to fight over your conscience. You got to fight over the spirit saying no. And even if you mess up when it's over, you're liable to hate yourself and hate whoever it was because the condemnation of the spirit of God will be so strong. Paul says when you got the Holy Ghost, it'll move in you in such a way that it'll make you do what God would have you to do and you just can't ignore it like it's not there. Oh, bless the name of God. Then he said, you're no more debtors to the flesh. That's what I read. He said, no more debtors to the flesh. The flesh will make you feel like you owe it something. Oh, yes, it will make you feel like you ought to satisfy it. The flesh is like the old boyfriend that comes to town. Oh, I might as well preach it. I'm up now. He's like the old boyfriend that comes to town. You know, he'd come and see you, then he'd take off. And sometime you don't see him for years. Here he comes but because he used to be your friend he thinks he can come back whenever he gets ready oh, I'm in town baby hello how you doing baby let's go out for old time's sake last time he stopped by you told him no and he said what's going on because he remembers you were a party animal he said what you talking about you ain't going with me no I go to church now you you go to church yes I go to church now you're not gonna let me in no you stay right there I go to church I'm a child of God no you must have a man yeah I got a man his name is Jesus and I don't owe you anything because where were you when my soul was dying in its sin where were you when I was hooked on drugs and didn't have anybody to talk to where were you when I couldn't make it through the night I don't owe you anything because Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe oh bless the name of God uh, Paul says and when the spirit testifies to your spirit uh, that's what he says some goes on in the Holy Ghost because uh, the Holy Ghost has got to speak to your spirit uh, I'm not talking speaking to your brain and then to your spirit uh, God can bypass your intellect uh, and speak to your spirit uh, and tell you no matter how your brain is trying to put you down uh, the spirit speaking to your spirit uh, man talks to your brain uh, and tells your brain who you are uh, then out of your mouth comes Abba Father uh, I know who I am uh, I don't care who then tries to walk on me uh, I don't care who's talking about me uh, or who's trying to put me down uh, that day I don't even care about getting into the elite group in the church because uh, I really don't care who the group is uh, when I know for myself uh, that I am a child of God uh, it really doesn't matter who's got the group uh, I got him for myself uh, and then Paul says you groan in hope uh, uh, because in chapter 8 he talks about the fact that you get sick of yourself every real child of God gets sick of themselves I'm not talking about looking at other folk now I'm talking about dealing with me when God is working with me and God is taking me higher I get sick of my attitude and sick of my lack of joy and so what Paul says is you got to hope 
you got to hope because hope that is seen is not hope so while I'm groaning in this flesh wish I had a body that would cooperate wish I had a situation that would cooperate wish I had an attitude that would cooperate Paul is saying you hope but you groan in the flesh then he says the spirit likewise maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered God talking so deep in your spirit till you can't even make words out of it God talking to you till you can't even explain just what's going on but you know something is happening on the inside somebody says well how you know it's going to be all right God told me I can't explain how but I just know how because the spirit make it intercession I feel the Holy Ghost and he says all things work together for good ah God's manipulative power that's why I told you God is not to be recognized because a lot of times I don't see God in it but God is not to be seen the just shall live by faith and when you have faith you don't see you perceive and you know it in the inside the inner man is aware of what the outer man don't know I wish I could talk to you tonight because I perceive it in my spirit and then of course whom he did for no called a justified glorified but you can't close and walk out without a test and so the writer says there is a test and a challenge because when you think you know something about God the devil challenges you on all sides oh my body's almost here the devil challenges on all sides and you can't run from the challenge no child of God ever runs from a challenge from the devil you've got to accept it psychologically you've got to grasp it intellectually and you've got to enjoy it even in the middle of it because you know in your spirit that God's going to bring it through and so then the question comes and Paul is not going by how we feel now he's going to logic he says what shall we then say to these things if God the one that created the heavens and the earth if God the one that catabole threw the world into its place if God is for you now come on think about it who can be against you look at your neighbor say neighbor can you be against me if God is for me come on with your puny self what can you do to me if God is for me you can't stop my ministry if God is for me you can't kill my church if God is for me you can't break up my home if God is for me you can't make me file bankruptcy if God is for me come on think about it I don't care how you feel you can feel bad but still know that if God is for me can't nobody shake me up I feel like preaching tonight oh, when he said who it walked down the corridors of heaven when the who came out it walked down in the glory he knocked on Gabriel's office said Gabriel God's got a question for you if God be for one of those children in lively stone Gabriel can you be against that child of God Gabriel jumped back in his office shut the door he said why are you all trying to start a mess here with God went down to Michael's office said Michael come out here we got a question if God is for one of these children in St. Louis can you do anything about it Michael said man I'm gone it got out of heaven the who walk into the earth stop by the IBM office and call the boss out and the who said to the boss if God 
God is for that girl working over in your clerical section that you don't want to have a raise but if God wants her to have a raise can you stop from signing her raise paper what can you do about it if God wants the district elder to have some immigration papers who can be against giving him the papers if God said give it to him Reagan got to do it Bush has got to do it because if God be for you I feel the spirit of the Lord and then he said and then he said ah if he already gave you his son how shall he not with you freely give you all things tell your neighbor if you got Jesus I feel like having a little church here you have already got the best thing that God can give if you got Jesus you already have the best gift that heaven can afford so if he gave you Jesus why don't you think that he'll give you a house cause a house ain't nothing if you got Jesus why don't you think he'll give you a man honey cause if you got Jesus a man ain't nothing crying about a car crying about some clothes complaining about some shoes if you already got Jesus you already got the best gift that God can give then he said number three what is the challenge to intercession who can lay any charge against God's elect come on organist let's have church who can lay anything against God's elect it's God that alone can find fault you can't find fault with me and I can't find fault with you the only one who can find fault is at the right hand making intercession and he's not trying to put me down while he's trying to pick me up I wish I could preach this thing so tell your neighbor I'm a conqueror we're conquerors now but we got to go to more than can I preach part two when I looked at the more than for two whole weeks I couldn't find the more than I said Lord what is this more than because I understand I'm a conqueror through the blood of Christ through the weapons of armor warfare that are not carnal I can tell the devil get out of my house because I am a conqueror but where is the more than he said look at verse 36 for thy sake we are killed all the day long so I ran back to Psalm 44 and I read the complaint of the psalmist the psalmist says I'm serving your Lord but it looks like you won't see about my situation I'm serving you but it looks like all the good strong men have died out of Israel it looks like we have no victory because you have withdrawn your presence from us it looks like we're being slayed like a butcher would slay sheep not even sacrifice but we're being slayed for food and I'm going through something that I don't see God getting any glory out of it's one thing when you're going through a situation and you know God's getting the glory but when you're going through something and you can't find out how God can get the glory I'm being slain for food he says and you know Lord that I've been serving you I've been paying my tithes so how come I can't pay my phone bill I've been serving you these many years and you want me to be holy but I can't find a husband nowhere and the flesh is driving me crazy I might as well preach it because it happens every day oh Lord help me I don't understand I go to prayer every night and yet still I don't get what I want and I 
can't get what I need. And the psalmist was complaining. And ultimately he said, I'm serving you and you know my record. You know whether I'm holy or not. But you won't change my situation. Can I preach this thing now? There are times in your life when you're serving God with all you have. And you wonder why God won't change your situation. Tell your neighbor, I know that's right. I know y'all want to act sanctified tonight. But the truth of the matter is, when you're in a situation that won't go your way, you beg God to move it. You say, I've been holy and I'm still driving a raggedy car. And you know I need a new car. And it looked like God won't answer. I've been holy. But I've been without a husband for 10 years. And my self-esteem is going to nothing. I wish I had somebody to take me to dinner sometime. But here I am in this lonely house again. And I know what God. You can give me a husband if you want. But God ain't saying nothing. I've been serving you these years with an affliction in my body. And I know if you want to, with one word you can move it. But God ain't saying nothing. I cook for my children. They're all on dope. And I raised them in the Sunday school. And I know, Lord, that you can bring them home with one word. Now when your situation is going against you, then it begins to put doubt in your mind about everything that you heard in the church. Y'all ain't gonna hear me, but it's true anyhow. But the more than conqueror is the individual that God expects to live holy with a bad situation. He ain't just a conqueror now because his situation is against him. The enemy is against him and the doubt is coming to his mind. So he's got to overcome the doubt then overcome the situation then till tell the devil get out of my house I got a bad situation I got doubts in my mind but I'm still a child of God so I'm not only a conqueror but I'm more than because when I got up this morning I whipped the doubt in my mind I overlooked my situation and I still told the devil get out of my car get out of my house because I got a bad situation that don't mean I can't praise the Lord because I'm wondering what's going on that don't mean I ain't got victory I'm gonna make it plain come on give me some help here is a brother now he's a conqueror because he comes to church and serves the Lord he's got a car outside a 190e he's got clothes oh God all kind of brionis he's got sweet everything lovely wife lovely home and when he comes to church he shouts like a conqueror now here is a brother he ain't got no car he's got to catch the bus he ain't got no wife he ain't got no job but when he comes to church and you see him together you can't tell him different when it comes to praising the Lord he ain't got no nothing but he praises the Lord with the same intensity that he praises the Lord now he is a conqueror but he's a more than y'all ain't gonna hear me tell your neighbor more than help me Mr. Sound Man I'm more than I praise him with tears in my eyes I ain't just a conqueror I'm more than I lift him up with everything going against me I ain't just a conqueror I'm more than they told me I'd never make it but God kept me
me anyhow. I ain't just a conqueror. I'm more. Somebody holler more than. Tell somebody more than. I'm more than. You know what I've been through. You know how I cried. You know how the devil walked all over me. But after it's over, I'm still here. Still holy. Still sanctified. Still lifting him up. Still praising him. Still holding on. Because I'm not just a conqueror. But I'm a... Somebody holler more than shake somebody's hand and say more, more than, more. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. You can make it. God ain't just raising conquerors. He's raising Hallelujah 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 When he won't Change Your situation He looks at the devil And he says devil Even though She's got a bad situation You still can't do nothing with her because she's not just a conqueror. She's more than. So when I get up and the situation won't change, I'm gonna beat it anyhow. When I get up and my mind's confused, I'm more than. I'm more than everything against me but when the smoke clears I'm still standing because I'm not just a conqueror but I'm more so Satan so Satan throw your hands up give him the praise hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you said I couldn't make it. You said it four years ago. Some of you said I couldn't take it. You said it ten years ago. But you're still here. You're still taking it. You're still making it because you're not just a conqueror. You are more. Hey! You don't have to have it going your way. Because you got power beyond power. And that's what God is saying. The more than, the more than is not tied into the side of conquering. The more than is tied into the side of how much is against the individual who is expected to conquer even with all the odds when they look at your situation they say how can you ever rejoice how can you praise the lord how can you ever come running down an aisle lifting up the name of jesus with all you're going through and the only answer is i ain't just a fair weather conqueror honey I ain't just a conqueror when everything's going all right. I don't have to have a good situation to know that my God is real. I don't look for God in my situation. I'm more than conqueror. So God says to the devil, stack everything up against him you can. And I won't even move to change it. And you're going to meet him next Friday. And when the dust clears, they'll still be standing because I don't just raise conquerors 
I raise more than. Saints, in my conclusion, in my conclusion, in my conclusion, theology and Christian statements can only be validated and authenticated by how close they measure up to what happened on Calvary's cross. I want to tell you, until Laodicean Christianity goes back, most of us as saints are serving God, looking for better situations. I'm telling you. And some folk feel like they're far from God because they're still in the ghetto, still driving old raggedy car, don't have all the clothes other people have. And the theology of our day has made it that way. But Calvary shows us that you can have power in weakness. That you have life in death. Are you hearing me? And you don't have to be rich to know God. I hear people run the Old Testament and take stories and make Christian statements. You can't make a lot of Christian statements. From that, that led us to Christ. Because the Bible says, he spoke to the prophets, to the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he speaks to us by his son. Amen. Amen. A Christian statement has got to be validated by the substratum of the Christian faith. And what lies under the Christian faith is Calvary. And Calvary fits in everybody's life. It says no matter what I'm going through, how could God be most revealed in the situation that says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the Bible says it's in the gospel that the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith some of us in here our situations will never change but God will still expect <laughs> us to have victory amen what are you going to do until it changes if if I can only serve God when I have a husband but I can't be faithful to God without a husband then it's the situation that made you and not God if I can only have joy with a Mercedes then that cannot be Holy Ghost joy that's Dame LeBen's joy y'all ain't hearing me if I can only get happy when everything's going my way, then that means God can't do nothing with a bad experience. Don't you tell me Calvary was a bad experience. But three days later, he said, I got all power. The only way to get the keys to hell is to go to hell. And after you come up from your hell, you got the keys to it. And you can tell your hell, I won't be back. I won't be back. I won't. Ah! We got to go back to the truth. And you got to tell the devil. Jesus stood up to the cross when he walked. Whooped wounded he was bleeding everywhere I don't have the time tonight hemohydrosis bleeding from his sweat glands nailed between the carpal and the radius bones peroneal uh, median nerve shattered whipped with a with a flagrum iron balls sheep bones had a panic bullet on his back the cross member of the cross 75 to 125 pounds up all night 
You can do everything God says and still end up on a cross. Y'all ain't hearing me. We ought to throw out all of this mess people are preaching and teaching all over this world. You can follow God. Nobody followed God like Jesus and he ended up on a cross. That's why we ought to preach what we preach. Because we don't want our ministries on a cross. That's why we preach all the money, health, and power, and you're going to get rich and folk running for it. Because we don't want our ministries on a cross. That's why we compromise truth. That's why we seek something to make folk shout instead of seek something to make them live. Because we don't want our ministries on a cross. Because you can follow God to the letter and end up <laughs> oh, uh. but I noticed one thing about Jesus bleeding everywhere up all night whip circulatory shock was setting in his body had no friends nowhere with that thing on his back that women were weeping and he looked at them and said don't weep for me I said, what's going on here? Nailed him and hung him up. Said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know what he showed me? He showed me you can be wounded. You can be broken. But you don't have to be conquered. Are y'all hearing me, children of God? You can be hurt. Until you don't even know yourself at times. You can be laying on a pillow. Boo-hooing in the midnight hour when everybody's sleeping. You can feel down in your soul like you are nothing. You can have pain everywhere for what folk are doing. And every time you turn around, there's another headache. Somebody else just don't like you can be worn out in your life and hurt all around but with all of that you can still lift your head up and say I might be wounded devil I might be broken but you can't get in my spirit and make me deny that my God is a good God cause I'm not just a conqueror I ain't just a good time saint. I ain't just. <laughs> but I'm more than. Throw your hands up and say I'm more than. Oh you got to say it from your heart. I'm more than. Hallelujah to God. They go show to you the boy. Jump on your feet. Oh jump on your feet if you can. Oh, glory. I want you to take one person by both hands. One person by both hands. Everybody find somebody. Find somebody, honey. Find somebody somewhere. Find somebody. Hallelujah. It's a great church, great saints. But there's a lot of pain in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for one another. But before you close your eyes. I want you to look at the person before you. Close your eyes now. That's a real person. Now this person may never talk to you. They might not be confidants. This might be the first time you were this close to this person. But I promise you that there are things that they have to fight. There's pain somewhere there. Disappointment and heartache. 
and sometimes they don't feel they just don't feel it I just don't feel the Bible teaches us whatsoever things we bound on earth are bound in heaven whatsoever things we loose are loose we've got a binding hand we've got a loosing hand and I want you to ask the Holy Spirit right now to give you what to pray for a person you might not know anything about squeeze one hand together we bind depression we bind oh god every <laughs> every spirit of loneliness we bind every spirit that would come against we bind it right now we bind slanderers we bind sexual proclivities that would overpower we bind right now bitterness and malice we bind it right now in the echo show to you in the name of jesus we bind it lord oh, oh god right now move lord god move to bind bind low self-esteem bind it now bind it i don't have to be lonely because i'm alone bind it right now bind it bind every negative spirit bind every depressed spirit in the name of jesus we claim it right now now squeeze the other hand squeeze the other hand we lose joy we lose ministries we lose blessings we lose the power that is dormant within we lose it right now loose that soul set a free set him free loose that ministry loose that anointing in the name of jesus in the name of jesus give him the praise give him the praise give him the praise give him the praise praise oh. hallelujah i'm more than 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 i'm more than, I'm more than. Oh, glory. you may never change my situation but i'm more than <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, mother. Hey. Hey. Oh, glory. Oh, lift him higher. Oh, higher. 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 Don't stay in the outer circle. Get in the inner. Get in the inner court. Don't just stay out there, but get into the Holy of Holies. Get in there. Get in there where the incense. Get in there where the blood. Get in where the mercy seat is. Praise him till the veil comes down. I'm more there. I'm more there. I'm more there. I know you're crying. I know you're hurt. I know your situation is all over you. But down in your soul, there's an eternal fire that says more there. More there. Oh, glory. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. 
adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Somebody ought to come. The Lord's calling you. Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore. Come on, God's calling you. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Why do we want to? For He alone, for He alone is worthy. For He alone is worthy for he alone is worthy oh. ah. while you're standing somebody out here that's not saved God's calling you tonight if you have not repented of your sins now is the time for Christ died that you might have a right to the tree of life sorry for your sins you feel a pang of guilt for the things you've done then it's God moving you condemned for the way you've lived God is moving you thank you mother so sweet thank you condemned because you haven't lived like you should then it's time to repent I'm sorry for my sins I believe in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and I have sinned and I want my sins remitted I want to have a walk with God I want to live with God come on come on come on come on come on I see a man coming. Come on. Come on. Somebody else come. I see somebody coming this way. Oh, I see a young man coming. Somebody else. Here's somebody else coming. Come on. It's your time now. I want a relationship with God. I want to serve God. I want to live for God. Here's another man coming. Come on. Give God the praise. 